With basic EPS as the foundation, we now proceed to diluted EPS. A company's earnings per share can potentially be diluted if the capital structure contains convertible preferred stock, convertible bonds outstanding, or stock options or warrants. Let's start with convertible preferred stock. In this illustration, we have a company that has common stocks and some preferred shares. Some of the preferred shares are convertible. Preferred dividends are to be set aside for the preferred shareholders. We've learned in the last lesson that the basic EPS is the net income minus all the preferred dividends paid out divided by the number of common shares. Diluted EPS is calculated using the IF converted method. The IF converted method calculates what the effect would have been if the convertible preferred shares converted at the beginning of the period. So here, if the convertible shares had been converted, there would be two effects. First, the convertible preferred securities would no longer be outstanding. Instead, additional common stock would be outstanding. Since these are additional shares, we need to add the new shares that are created to the denominator. Second, if such a conversion had taken place, the company would not have paid preferred dividends on the converted shares. Since the dividend for the convertible preferred shares has already been subtracted, we need to add back this amount as it would be available to common shareholders if the conversion had taken place. As such, the formula for a company's diluted EPS will look like this if the only dilute of securities that are outstanding are convertible preferred shares. Let's see how we can apply this. Last year, Complicated Inc. reported net income of $100,000 and had 50,000 shares of common stock and 1,000 shares of convertible preferred stock outstanding for the entire year. Each preferred share is $100 par value, pays 5% dividend, and is convertible to 25 shares of common stock. Compute the basic and diluted EPS. Pause the video now and work out your answer. And we're back. You should be able to calculate the basic EPS. The company pays $5 for each share of preferred stock, which works out to a total preferred dividend payout of $5,000. The weighted average of the common stock is $50,000 for the year. Plugging all the figures into the formula, the basic EPS is $1.90. To calculate the diluted EPS, let's change the scenario to the if-converted scenario. So the 1,000 shares of convertible preferred stock are converted at the beginning of the year. Each preferred share is converted to 25 shares of common stock, which gives us an additional 25,000 common shares for the year. This is added to the denominator. At the numerator, since all the preferred shares have been converted, the entire net income of $100,000 is available to the common stock holders. Plugging in the figures, we get a diluted EPS of $1.33. Notice the diluted EPS of $1.33 is lower than the basic EPS of $1.90. This confirms that the effect of the preferred stock conversion is dilutive. When a security is dilutive, it must be included in the diluted EPS computation. If the answer is higher than the basic EPS of $1.90, the preferred stock is anti-dilutive. We should not include the conversion effects in the diluted EPS computation in this case. A quick way to check whether the convertible preferred stock is dilutive is to divide the preferred dividend by the number of shares that will be created if the preferred stock is converted. For this example, this is 20 cents. Since this is less than basic EPS, this convertible preferred stock is dilutive. Another type of security that can cause EPS dilution is convertible bonds. Here we see the capital structure of the company is made up of common stock, convertible bonds and non-convertible preferred shares. Interest payment is obligated to debt holders and preferred dividends obligated to preferred shareholders. The if-converted method is also used in this case. 
Diluted EPS is calculated as if all the convertible bonds had been converted at the beginning of the period. If the convertible debt had been converted, the debt securities would no longer be outstanding. Instead, additional shares of common stock would be outstanding. We add this number to the denominator. Also, if such a conversion had taken place, the company would not have paid interest on the convertible debt. So in the numerator, we have to add back the interest. Note that in this case, debt interest is often non-taxable. So if we add back the interest, the amount becomes taxable income. We have to multiply it by 1 minus the tax rate to get the net increase in profit attributable to shareholders. Let's apply this in an example. Last year, Obligated Incorporated reported a net income of $100,000 and had 50,000 shares of common stock and 200 convertible bonds outstanding for the entire year. Each convertible bond is $1,000 par value, pays 3% interest and is convertible to 100 shares of common stock. The tax rate is 30%. Compute the basic and diluted EPS. Pause the video now and work out your answer. And we're back. Calculation for basic EPS is straightforward. There is no preferred stock, so all the net income goes to the common stock holders. The weighted average of the common stock is 50,000 for the year. Plugging all the figures into the formula, the basic EPS is $2. To calculate the diluted EPS, let's change the scenario to the if converted scenario. So the 200 convertible bonds are converted at the beginning of the year. Each bond is converted to 100 shares of common stock, which gives us an additional 20,000 common shares for the year. This is added to the denominator. At the numerator, we add back the interest payment that would not be paid if the bonds were converted. This interest is 3% of $200,000. We multiply it by 1 minus the tax rate as this income is now taxable. As such, we add an after-tax income of $4,200 to the numerator. Plugging in the figures, we get a diluted EPS of $1.49. Notice that the diluted EPS of $1.49 is lower than the basic EPS of $2. This confirms that the effect of the preferred stock conversion is dilutive and hence it must be included in the diluted EPS computation. A quick way to check whether the convertible bond is dilutive is to calculate its per share impact using this formula. For obligated ink, this is 21 cents. Since this is less than basic EPS, the convertible bond is dilutive. The third kind of potentially dilutive security that we should look at is stock options. In this illustration, we have a capital structure made up of common stocks and stock options. Diluted EPS is calculated as if all the options had been exercised. This means that all the options are converted into new shares. The company uses the cash proceeds from the exercise to repurchase as much common stock as possible at the average market price of common stock during the period. This gives us the net increase in number of common stock. The dilution is caused by this net increase in common stock. The weighted average number of shares outstanding for diluted EBS is thus increased by the number of shares that would be issued upon exercise, minus the number of shares that would have been repurchased with the proceeds. This method is known as the treasury stock method. Let's learn how to apply this method. Last year, Arbitrary Incorporated reported net income of $100,000 and had 50,000 shares of common stock and 3,000 outstanding stock options for the entire year. Each stock option is convertible into one common share at $30 per share. The company's average stock price for the year was $40. Compute the basic and diluted EPS. Pause the video now and work out your answer using the treasury stock method. And we're back. Basic EPS is straightforward. Total income available to common stockholders is $100,000 
since no preferred shares are mentioned. Divide this by 50,000 shares for the whole year and we get a basic EPS of $2. The first step of the Treasury stock method is to compute the cash proceeds if all the options are converted. So if all 3,000 stock options are converted at $30 each, the total proceeds will be $90,000. 3,000 new shares will be issued in this conversion. The next step is to compute how many shares can be repurchased using the cash proceeds. Using the average price of $40, 2,250 common stocks can be repurchased. Net shares issued would be 750 shares. Plugging in the figures, we get a diluted EPS of $1.97. Again, since the diluted EPS is lower than the basic EPS, the stock option is dilutive. It should therefore be included in the computation of the diluted EPS. Stock options are dilutive only when their exercise price is less than the average market price of the stock over the year. We've examined the effects of convertible preferred shares, convertible bonds and stock options on the diluted EPS separately. What if a company has two or more of these potentially dilutive securities at the same time? Starting from the formula for basic EPS, add on the appropriate adjustments in the numerator and denominator based on the if converted method and treasury stock method. If there are convertible preferred stocks, assume that they are all converted at the beginning of the year. Add back the convertible preferred dividends in the numerator and the increase in common shares from conversion to the denominator. If there are convertible bonds, assume that they are converted at the beginning of the year. Add back the after-tax bond interest to the numerator and the increase in common shares from the conversion to the denominator. And if there are stock options or warrants, calculate the net increase in shares using the treasury stock method and add the figure to the denominator. Remember, each potentially dilutive security must be examined independently to determine if it is actually dilutive. We include the security in the diluted EPS computation only if it is actually dilutive. And that concludes this lesson on diluted EPS. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At PrepNuggets, let us do the hard work for you.